Hi and welcome to Girl Talk. We are having a very, very relaxing and lovely time listening to the birds, being around the flowers and seeing the butterflies. <laughs> I hope you guys America's can hear them at home. I don't yeah. know if they'll be able to, but well, it really can. is. I mean, it's real. There's no sound effects here. It's well, real. That's what I thought at first. Yeah. One of the first times I came in, because sometimes you walk into places and it's just like a soundtrack sure. that they're playing. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I remember because I asked the staff, and sure enough, it's real birds because the greenhouse roof actually opens mm -hmm. up in here. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. It Unfortunately, we haven't invented smell vision yet because it is so fragrant. Can we get in on here. that? I know. Let's <laughs> yeah, work on it. Is. <laughs> but it is just smells amazing in here. It is just such a breath of fresh air, literally, to be in this space. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone said we're at America's Best Flowers in Cottage Grove, yep. right? I, I've been trying to sneak that in there, but Ellen <laughs> Jana keeps us on track. Talking about yeah. the birds. <laughs> Apologize to the viewers. I've let them out of control again. <laughs> It's true. You're the official keep us on tracker. You need I like try. a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get her one of those old gym teacher whistles. To have you We're talking about fitness today too. Yeah. CrossFit. Yeah. We've been talking about CrossFit quite a bit on this yeah. station, and you've done some CrossFit. You've done some CrossFit. What yeah. have your experiences been like? I loved it, and I have to be totally honest. When I went into the class, I was very scared because I think people have this idea in their head of it just being so crazy intense, and I'm just going to be pushed way beyond my comfortable limits and you know, I'm gonna end up passed out on the floor by the end of the session. But what's cool about CrossFit is that you make it all at your own pace and your ability level. And I think that's probably the coolest thing. And I think most gyms run more female than male, which that's, I also yeah. didn't know. That's right. what these folks, we're talking to the guys from CrossFit Board Atkinson who, um, they've got some competitions coming up for men and women, which is mm -hmm. exciting. Different levels of kind of beginner to intermediate to, you know, some of the elite athletes and, and people can go and watch this competition, which is pretty cool. It's at their gym in Fort Atkinson, which I've been there and it's such a cool gym and the energy. Fort Atkinson is, so, is cool. so cute. It's a great town. Yeah. Yeah. I get so to, cute. I get to go there every now and again and everybody I encounter there is very sweet and, um, yeah, it's a great small town atmosphere, mm -hmm. but. People We're also going to be talking <laughs> about, I'm moving us on, I'm the official keep everyone straighter now, Janet. I'm just here uh, to talk about <laughs> stuff. We're going to have to make up some hand signals or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut. They've got them behind the camera, we just aren't listening to them, but we are <laughs> also general, giving yeah. you some really fun tips about getting pulled over and what to do. Oh, yeah. so, and what not yeah. to do. Or what not to do, yeah. yeah. So some really good ideas that we're going to chat with Alvarez Law about, and obviously they've seen their fair share of uh, roadside issues, so mm -hmm. they have a lot of knowledge. I'm Straight from the lawyer's kind of mouth. I'm excited about that because I think people, you have an idea of what you should do, but I guess I've never actually talked to a lawyer or you know, ask somebody mm -hmm. in that field what you yeah. should do. There's a lot of urban myths about that, but anyway, we'll be able to talk about that in just a moment. Stay with us, we'll be back with more Girl Talk in just a moment. Welcome back to Girl Talk. We are here enjoying the beautiful scenery at America's Best Flowers. And a little later, we're going to give you some pointers for what you should be doing in your yard right now at this point in summer. Right now, we're going to give you some pointers about what maybe you should do if you get pulled over, which a lot of us don't want to admit to. But you don't have to admit it. You can just learn some tips. And we're going to get <laughs> some fabulous tips. This is uh, Jair with Alvarez Law. Alvarez Law, excuse me, I'm tripping over your name. But let's talk a little bit about this. This is traffic stop safety. So what do we do if we get pulled over? And I'm asking for a friend, of course. Of course. <laughs> so the most important thing to do is uh, remain calm. Uh, in, in traffic stops, a very important thing is officer safety. So one thing that I would suggest is if you get pulled over, just remain calm. Um, the officer will walk up to you, probably request your uh, license and registration, proof of insurance. Um, let them know what you're doing. Keep your hands in a visible place where they can see them at all times. Let them know, you know, my license is in my wallet or it's in my purse. Can I reach for it? And they'll tell you uh, yes. And you give it to them, they'll go to their vehicle, maybe they'll write you up a ticket, maybe they won't. If you're nice, more likely that they won't than they will. If you're not nice, you know, that ticket is probably going to come. It all depends on the, on the situation and the officer. I think that's a good pointer to let them know what you're doing because even though you know that you may not be a threat, you forget that they deal with some really challenging situations and so that can be really scary probably for for somebody if you're reaching and they don't know what you're grabbing or what you're doing if they've been in those situations before. Absolutely and you got to remember too, you know, they do these multiple times a day and if you're not the nicest driver, 
they don't have a reason to be nice to you either. Mm -hmm. So it's always best that you remain calm and be cordial. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think another piece of advice is often to not get out of your vehicle. That would look confrontational, I suppose. Is there ever a time that you should get out of your vehicle? If they request that you get out of the vehicle. Okay. Request or order? Um, usually they'll say, can you get out of the vehicle? I mean, if they're screaming at you to get out of the vehicle, something <laughs> probably <out>. went wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, unless they request that you get out of the vehicle, there's really no reason to get out. Okay. It's so good to have your point of view because, you know, there's been people out there maybe watching the show who are, you know, in law enforcement and then there's the rest of us who aren't and the perspective to be in, you know, the police officer in that moment or the person sitting in the driver's seat, both of those perspectives are biased. So it's good to have someone from the outside to say, hey, this is the best way to behave because everyone's dealing with a different emotion at that time. So Absolutely. it's really good to have your point of view for everyone out there. Is there, speaking of that though, being the person in the driver's seat, you know, at what point do you say, I've done something wrong, or if you felt like you haven't done something wrong, or maybe you, you know. Yeah, they often ask, speeding. do you know why I pulled you over? Right. Do, do you answer that? How do you know, Janet? <laughs> just yeah, I've wait a minute. seen it on TV. <laughs> Well, you don't have to admit to any wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, you do or they'll, don't have to? You don't have to. Okay. And they'll let you know if you did something wrong, and there'll probably be a ticket coming along with that. Is it helpful so to say, yes, I know I've been speeding, or just to say, I have no idea? Like, what, does it matter? Well, if they ask you, um, make it easier for your lawyer, don't admit to anything. Oh, okay. And then, you know, just take the ticket and then call your lawyer and we'll work it out for you. That's probably, we're talking potentially more about some more serious things if you're looking to possibly hire a lawyer and you and your line of work being a defense attorney have obviously seen a lot. So what are some of the most common reasons that people get pulled over? Well, lots of speeding. Um, changing lanes without signaling can get you pulled over. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, reckless driving if you're, you know, sort of being aggressive toward other drivers and maybe people don't know this but other drivers can actually call the police on you as they're driving and uh, the police will stop you on the highway or wherever you're at. They can based on uh, other people calling. Sure, well that's good, good to know actually because obviously police officers can't be everywhere and can't see everything. We only have a few seconds left, Jair. Are there certain times or days that you're pulled over and when should somebody hire an attorney? I think you should hire an attorney uh, pretty much all the time. You, you, a lot of people don't know their rights and it's very important to reserve them. Um, holidays are particularly important. Okay, gotcha. Well, thank you for the tips. All really good information. If you get yourself into a pickle, you know who to call. This is Jair Alvarez with Alvarez Law. And you're watching Girl Talk. We'll be back with more at America's Best Flowers. Hi and welcome back to Girl Talk. We're having a very nice time here at America's Best Flowers and we're going to get to talk to those folks later. Excited. Excited. But on another realm of excitement, I want to introduce these folks on my left. I have gotten the pleasure to get to know these guys over the last several weeks. They are from CrossFit Fort Atkinson. Um, to my left, I'm going to introduce them and their spirit animal names because we're into this now. Oh, <laughs> so, I like we it. Got, we got Brady, yep. the great white. Yep. And we have Great Trent white. or Panther to my left here. And they are oh amazing gosh. athletes, really amazing coaches, and have some fun stuff to share with us about what's happening at CrossFit Fort Atkinson. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Thank Do you. Do we get spirit animals? We, should we? Yeah. Can I feel we? like I'm a tiger. You feel like you're a tiger? What, what do you Panther? feel like? Uh, I'm, I'm going to answer that in a minute. I'm <laughs> think on that for a minute. Think on that. <laughs> think on that, exactly. So there's a competition coming up at your gym. So tell right. us about that. Somebody just jump in and start filling us in on the details. Yeah, so we have a, a women's competition coming up on July 15th. Okay. Um, and then the following day on July 16th, there will be a men's competition. So women's competition is teams of two. It will start early on in the morning and then run through the day. And then the following day is, uh, like I said, the guys' competition teams of three. A um, couple different divisions, depending on you know if you're a fire breather, weekend warrior. It just pretty much breaks down to elite or um, more your your average intermediate, intermediate athlete. Okay. Yeah. So this is a competition more for people that have already been doing CrossFit, though. So this isn't like a hey, the, I've never done it before. Let me jump the in. The men's compete. side, yeah. The, okay. the women's side, they have three divisions. Okay. Um, they have a fun division, um, which is like beginners Good. and just right. getting started. Right. So. It is for the women. It's it's all divisions. Okay, great. Yeah. So there is an opportunity for everyone to get involved. And from what I recall last time, there was also an opportunity to watch this if you're interested yep. in seeing mm -hmm. people doing some serious crossfit. Right, totally free to come in and watch. Um, so it is held at CrossFit Fort Atkinson at our gym. 
Um, and like, like I said, totally free to come in and watch, hang out for the day. And, uh, and watch some people go at it. That's awesome. awesome. And there, I, you guys are creating the events right now yep. from what I understand, which mm -hmm. is, I got to view a little bit of that the other day in cool. the gym. Their gym is right downtown Fort Atkinson and it's, it's quite a cool jam. It's all high ceilings and open spaces and it's very neat. So. You always gotta be in a, a space that inspires you to yeah. work harder. Right. Yes. That's mm -hmm. super cool. Yep. Definitely. And I know you guys mentioned men and women. Is it like 50-50 men and women that, that come As far as our, our gym Atkinson? membership? Yeah. Oh, I would say, say we have more women than, yeah. than really? men in our gym. Yeah. Yeah. That's surprising to me because I think, you know, being a woman, oftentimes we think of CrossFit as being a male sport. At least I do. Yeah. Um, well, there's, I'm, as far as I understood, I've been having, you know, I've been gotten to learn about CrossFit a little bit as of the last few months. And it's really out there for everyone. I mean, yeah. I saw some folks in their gym in their 60s working out. Uh, yep. Ladies. No a big excuses. Group of ladies. No, right. not at all. No and they excuses. Are like, they're very in very good shape, and they, I mean, they blow your mind if you see wow. them work out. Wow. The one in particular, I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very exactly. cool. You've got some more offerings for women. Can someone tell me about the six-week challenge? Yeah, so we run um, uh, three challenges during the year. We have a summer, a spring, and a winter, and it's just for the ladies. Um, the last one, we had 45 ladies sign up. Wow. Yeah. And this was all age groups, um, in the 20s all the way up into the 50s and 60s. So. Um, we run the six weeks, and Brady, myself, and Coach Jeb coach the, the ladies through, and mm -hmm. they love us and they hate us every minute <laughs> yeah. of, of the way, but um, at the end, they leave feeling uh, really empowered, and, and most of them sign up, about half yeah. of them. It's, a, it's a great way for them to get introduced to CrossFit yeah. for six weeks, um, because, you know, it can be intimidating, you mm -hmm. know, to, to come into the gym, and, you know, they, they come in sometimes and ask questions, and they, they see some of us working out. And so the six-week challenge is just to get them with a, a group of you know peers similar to them, and uh, it gives us a lot of time to work with them and get them comfortable with with CrossFit. So and cool. with that piece, is there also a, is there a nutritional guide piece within yep. the six-week challenge? So that's where Meg comes in. Okay. Um, nice. Meg's the other owner of, of CrossFit X, and she does nutritional work with all the ladies. Wow. That's so. And important. if someone was interested in doing that, you have it already kind of set up for. Um, like a, a certain start date coming up for another six week challenge? The Is next one will be September. Yeah. September, yep. okay. September. Okay. And you can find out a lot more inf uh, information on their website. Very excited about CrossFit in general. The CrossFit Games are coming to Madison, Wisconsin, first time this summer in August for the next three years. So we're really proud to have that happen. Again, to my left here, we have Great White and Panther, or Brady and Trent from CrossFit Fort Atkinson. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Downtown. Thank you. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, join us for more after the break for more Girl Talk. Girl Talk, as you know, we have been filming today at America's Best Flowers, and I think we're having America's Best Day. We <laughs> are what having America's Best Day. <laughs> I think we are too. I had to get a little cheesy there. And with us now, a new face today, but you may know him. He's kind of famous in the Edgerton area from what I hear. This is Dennis, but most people probably know you as Spike, yep. and you're the manager of the Edgerton location. That's right. Yep. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Excited to have your knowledge here with us today. And now that July is upon us, what do people need to know and need to do to maintain their garden? I think it's easier at the beginning when you get the fresh plants and flowers and they're looking great because they've been here at America's Best Flowers, but what do you need to do to maintain them? Yeah, now we're getting into that typically where it gets hot. Yes. Um, there's different insect problems that are coming out. So we get a lot of questions, you know, how do I keep everything looking good? Um, biggest thing, you know, you need to, you need to keep things deadheaded a little bit, which can take a little bit of time. Some people like to do it, some don't. And what um, does that mean for people who may not know? Basically, Grateful Dead fans. Yeah, as the that? flowers um, mature, <laughs> they go through, some of them, they start to look a little bad. Don't don't ever be afraid to clip them down. Gotcha. Cut them off a little bit. You're not going to hurt the plant any, and it's going to grow back even better than it was to begin with. Okay. Um, a lot of times, it's always good. Um, one of our best products, our, one of our biggest sellers is Osmocote. Uh, we use it in all of our gardens, we use it in all of our baskets, all of our pots. Um, it's just a slow release fertilizer. Um, every time you water, even if you're not using fertilizer, you're going to get a little bit of a boost to your plants all the time. Wow. Um, now it's really important to be using your liquid miracle grows, um, any of those products to keep those plants nice and healthy so that when we get into this warm, should be maybe drier time of the year, it's not this year, <laughs> but um, they're going to be at their healthiest and performing the best for you. Um, 
And I'm not familiar with this product. I'm actually going to grab it and look at it. So when when do you apply this? Do you do it as you plant or then or later when you're watering? You can do either one. We recommend to do it right away as you plant. Sure. Um, it, every time you water, it slowly releases a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. And that will last up to three to six months. Wow. So um, all of our baskets, all of our, our containers, we put that in there right away. Um, so if you're... If you bought baskets, containers from us, you might want to think about refreshing them with some Osmocote. Gotcha. Now's a good time to do that. They, Smart. It's starting to wear out a little bit. So. That's a good point because you planted these baskets when? Um, a lot of them were started in February. February, mm -hmm. March, April, May. So they are running out and maybe do. Mm -hmm. And you just sprinkle it in there. Yep. It, there's there's going to be a little bit of, there's a little scoop in here, a uh, 10 inch basket like this, one scoop into a basket is going to wow. be perfect. So for you it. can do a lot. So let's talk for folks who do have container gardens. Now we know the tip of using some of this product. How often should we be watering? And also, is there a time of day that makes more sense than another? Yeah, usually when it gets warm like this, the best time to water anything is gonna be in the morning. A um, Couple of reasons for that. Um, usually a lot of plants don't like to be wet late in the day. Um, zinnias are one that, what, what can happen if they stay wet overnight, they can tend to get powdery mildew, which is a disease, and then it can hurt your plants. So if you can water them in the morning, that, that oftentimes is the best. Um, as far as checking them for water, you can stick your finger into the, into the soil, feel if it's wet. Otherwise, you can lift the pot, see if it's heavy. Uh, that's, that's how I do it myself. I walk around and I lift every basket. So what does that mean? If it's heavier, then it doesn't need water? Then it doesn't need water, okay. yep. Um, if it's on the lighter side, you're going to want to water it. And the thing to watch for this time of year is we get hotter and we get dry, windy days. They're gonna, there might be times, especially with a basket like this, you need to water it in the morning. And you get home from work, you might have to water it again. Um, oh, demanding little yeah, levels. Yeah, <laughs> that hot, hot, dry, windy days are the worst. And even sometimes, if it's possible with your baskets, um, maybe even just set them on the ground for the day if you know it's going to be a hot, dry wind because it, like I say, it can really dry them out. Yeah. Um, there is some benefit, our baskets, we try to grow in as big of a basket as we can, so we got as much soil volume as possible. These baskets also have a, a res water reservoir in the bottom, so oh, it's gonna nice. hold some water for you. I did notice that in looking in, I don't know if you can see this, but there's, it, there's actually quite a bit of space between where the plant starts and the bottom, which yep. must help some of that yep. water. And you when, you, when you water these, do you let the water run through? I generally don't. I like to, if you, if you see it just starting to come out, that's about perfect because you know it's going to hold a little bit of water. And all the excess will run. Um, you just want just a little bit in there because uh, you can hurt your plants by overwatering them too. A lot of people this year with all the rain that we've had, um, some of their gardens, their vegetables and stuff are really struggling because they're, mm. they're mm. sitting in water. Um, so, you know, it's going to be important as we start to dry out, give them a little bit of a boost of fertilizer. You usually don't have to fertilize your vegetable gardens that often, but if you're seeing them start to turn a little bit yellow, you're going to want to go ahead and put some miracle Grow. Um, even the Osmocote you can put there is a vegetable specific one you can put on there too. So, so you're saying if the plants start to yellow, vegetables or flowers or both? Both. If it's starting to yellow, that means you need some fertilizer. Need some fertilizer, hmm. yep. That's an indication something's going on with the plant. It's not getting all the nutrients that it needs. So you're going to want to go ahead and fertilize. Hmm. I have a clematis that's turning yellow. Maybe that's what it needs. It could be, uh, you know, and like I said, this year's been exceptionally wet. It's usually not this rainy this time of year. So it's it's been extra hard on the plants. Um, so you just got to be a little bit more diligent about it, making sure you're not watering them when they don't need it, and then making sure that they are getting fertilizer to help them perform their best for you. Okay, and uh, plants, container plants, need probably different watering than your vegetable garden, because um, if they're like on a sidewalk or something, heat can yeah. um, make it hotter, right? The heat, and then also, as you're in a container, as these plants are growing, they're getting more and more root bound. Oh. And, and less soil. Yeah, the big, so the bigger the plants are, the better they look, but there's less soil, it takes more water per day to keep them going. So you may, you know, like I say, on a hot, windy day, you might have to water them a couple times a day. Sure. Generally, this time of year, you're still able to get by with one time a day, 
with your, your nice big containers. You One know, thing I wanted to sneak in before we go is that obviously all these products that we've talked about and a lot more are available here. Yes. And look at the wealth of knowledge of the staff. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for yeah, sharing some of that with us. We always tell people, don't be afraid to come out, ask us questions. That's what we're here for. We're more than happy to help have you come out. We'll answer your questions. We'll walk you over, show you these different products that might help you have more success. Thank so you. much knowledge. Spike, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for having us today. It's been beautiful and gorgeous. And watch us next time. It's only on Girl Talk on Wisconsin's 57.